One of the earliest models of the atom was known as the planetary model, which was proposed by Rutherford. Now, although useful, it did not actually describe the structure of the atom very accurately because of two very important things. Firstly, this model did not incorporate the fact that energy is quantized. It did not include the quantum theory of energy. And secondly, it could not explain the line spectrum that was produced by individual atoms. So it failed to explain why individual atoms released electromagnetic radiation with specific frequencies. Now, to explain why atoms produce discrete line spectra and to incorporate the quantum theory of energy, a scientist by the name of Niels Bohr proposed his own model for the structure of the atom and this became known as the Bohr model. So the Bohr model can essentially be summarized in the following two statements. So let's examine statement number one. Electrons move about a nucleus in a circular fashion and each orbit corresponds to a discrete quantized amount of energy. So Niels Bohr incorporated the quantum theory of energy. Now an electron cannot exist in between any two given orbitals. Electrons can only be found on an orbital and not in between. Now as the electron electron moves about along the orbit, it does not actually radiate any energy. It does not lose or gain any energy. But how exactly does an electron lose or gain energy? That is explained by statement number two. So each possible orbit is called a stationary state and electrons emit energy only when that electron moves from the higher orbit to a lower orbit and conversely an electron gains energy when it moves from a lower orbit to a higher orbit. So let's examine the following diagram. So we have diagram A and diagram B. In diagram A we have the following nucleus and this is our electron found on the second orbit. There's one more orbit below that second orbit. So when the electron moves from the second orbit back down to the first orbit, it essentially releases a single photon of light. And that photon of light carries a certain discrete quantized amount of energy that is given by the following equation. So, to calculate how much energy is essentially released, how much energy the electron loses, we simply take the quantity of energy it had at this point and subtract the quantity of energy it has at this point. So we subtract E higher minus E lower and that gives us the quantity of energy that is carried by that photon and that is equal to H Planck's constant multiplied by F the frequency of oscillation. So now conversely if we examine going backwards let's suppose the electron moves from orbit 1 back to orbit 2 to move an electron from 1 to orbit 2 energy must be inputted. So Let's look at the following diagram which basically describes Bohr model. So we have the first orbit which has n equals 1. n is known as the principal quantum number. It basically designates which orbit we're referring to. So this electron is found in orbit number 1. But we also have orbit number 2 that is empty for this particular case. Now, the energy that an electron has at some orbit is known as the energy level or the energy state of that particular electron or that particular orbit. So, not only is energy quantized, but orbits are also quantized as shown by these positive integers. Now, the orbit closest to the nucleus has the lowest quantity 
of energy, so it has the lowest quantity of energy level, and the electron in this orbit has the lowest quantity of energy, and is said to be in the ground state. So for this particular case, this orbit corresponds to the ground state of our electron. If the electron is found in this orbit that is lowest in energy and closest to our nucleus, the electron is said to be in the ground state. However, if we take the electron and move it to the second orbital, the electron is now said to be in the excited state. So electrons higher up with respect to the ground state are said to be in the excited state. Now, how exactly do we define the energy of the electron relative to its position with respect to this nucleus? So, we discuss the electric potential energy because we're dealing with a negatively charged electron and a positively charged nucleus. So we essentially have a separation of opposite charge and that means this electron will have a certain quantity of electric potential energy that is given by the following equation. So the electric potential energy E is equal to Q1, the charge on the electron multiplied by Q2, the charge on the nucleus divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R, where R is simply the separation distance between the electron and our nucleus. So this equation gives us the energy of the electron a certain distance R from the nucleus. Now, an electron found in the ground state closest to our nucleus is assigned a negative quantity of electric potential energy. So the electron at this location is said to have a negative quantity of energy. Now, to move an electron farther from the nucleus, basically let's say if we move the electron from n equals 1 orbital to n equals 2 orbital, according to this discussion, energy must be inputted. So that means the energy becomes less negative as we go farther away from our nucleus. So once again, to move an electron farther from the nucleus, work must be done on that electron and so energy must be inputted. Therefore, energy becomes less negative as the electron is moved farther away from that nucleus. Now, we define ionization energy of our electron in the ground state as the minimum energy that is required to move an electron infinitely far away from the ground state from that atom. So notice if we look at the following uh, equation, when R is infinitely large, meaning when the electron and the protons in the nucleus are infinitely far away, the energy of our electron will be zero. So we define the electric potential energy of our electron when it's infinitely far away to be zero. And when the electron moves closer to our nucleus, it essentially lowers its energy, the energy becomes more negative. And when the electron is found in the ground state, that represents a position where the electric potential energy of the electron is most negative. So once again, as electron moves from a higher orbital to a lower orbital, it decreases in energy, meaning the energy becomes more negative, and so the electron is more stable. However, when you move the electron farther away from the nucleus, you have to input energy. The energy of the electron becomes more positive or less negative, and basically the electron becomes less stable.